guys. You actually tracked, tracked the Schneider eye. You can see here the track. Out here, a little bit side winding movement. Through here, it goes inside the bush. Then we check the other side of the bush. Here we saw something like, it looked like a snake was going deep, deep down. So we started to dig in. Hi guys, and welcome to my channel, Matt Van Gier. Here we have the beautiful Namaqua dwarf adder. I'm out here in the surrounding areas of the Northern Cape, along a coastal region, that's where these guys occur, in northwest of South Africa, all the way up into Namibia. So it's an endemic species to Southern Africa. These are locally abundant where they occur, but due to their very small distribution, anything can happen in a very short period of time. Habitat change, there's diamond mining out here. If they were to do developments or anything like that in these dunes, there's people driving around here in cars and motorbikes and things, which will definitely kill these little adders. They are absolutely stunning. There is color variation within these species as well, depending on the color of the sand. As you can see here, it's blending in extraordinarily well. And you get yellow morphs as well as more reddish morphs as you go away from the white sand dunes. There's another very similar species that occurs in Namibia called the Peringis adder, and they're very similar in size. This here is the smallest of all the bitter species within the genus, and is probably the smallest viper in the world. They only reach size of about 20 on average, with females being a lot larger than males, on the larger side up to 28 centimeters. So that's a really tiny snake. These guys are sidewinders as well. It's a very particular style of locomotion that these snakes use. They do go in a normal serpentine type fashion or use a little bit of the belly scales to move along. But when they need to move up steeper dunes or get away a little bit faster or keep off the warm sand, they will use that sand wine. So there's very little percentage of the body is actually touching the ground and they gain a lot of distance over a short period of time. These little adders actually have a very high mortality rate compared to other adders due to the high predator ratios that they have here in these environments. Mongoose, other snakes, cobras, cape corals, a bird, anything that comes across this, they'll eat them because of their small size. This is literally a little bite for, for a mongoose or whatever else might come around and eat it. Due to the high amounts of predators out here, these guys have actually evolved to breed on a more regular basis in terms of Viparidae. Viparidae usually, or vipers and adders, usually breed every other year and if not every third, fourth year, depending how big the clutch is. These guys have evolved due to the high amount of mortality rate per year to actually breed once a year. And the babies, it's anywhere between three to seven live young. And believe it or not, these, imagine this snake is maybe 21, 22 centimeters. The babies come out between 11 to 13 centimeters. So she'll carry between three to seven babies within her that are almost half her length, which is absolutely incredible. Now they have a very cool technique to keep away from everyone. And that's how we found it yesterday. We were following its tracks through the sand and you have these little trails that go like this. And that's just the little tail that's actually dragging behind as it moves through the sand. They eventually actually go completely under the sand and they'll wiggle themselves in. I thought it would be just the top surface and yes, they do do that to wait in ambush for animals and for their prey. They'll just have their eyes sticking out or part of their body. But when they're actually going to hide down, which is what I experienced yesterday, is that they actually can be found up to 15 centimeters deep under the soil, which is incredible.
These guys will be quite generalist feeders. They feed on the Namaqua rain frogs out here. They'll feed on lizards and geckos, which is plenty in abundance over here. And also due to their small size, a lot of people think that they don't eat very large prey. These guys have been recorded eating skinks and stuff that are almost the length of their bodies, including the tail. So very, very, very cool species of snake. Absolutely like becoming one of my favorites. The venom of this snake isn't that hectic. It's localized swelling, a lot of pain, a little bit of oozing, but no long lasting effects or damages. So not to worry too much being bitten by a snake like this. Just follow your anti-venom techniques or your first aid on snakes. If it does worsen, do head to a hospital just for some anti-inflammatories and basic things like that. The beautiful Namaqua June adder, smallest viper in the world. Um, guys, I think I'm going to let it put it back into the wild. The sun's about to set, so if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell, and stay tuned for the next species of snake we catch on Expedition South Africa. Remember, I stand for what we stand on.